Gray storm clouds hang heavily in the sky, a premonition of the war brewing. Fat raindrops dripped off my umbrella, a precursor of the bloodshed about to be unleashed on the jackals by Savage Wolves MC. Rain muddied the grass of the cemetery, and my heels sank into the waterlogged ground. Drenched and chilled to the bone, I used a large oak as cover from the wind, but it did nothing to deter the angrily blowing downpour from hitting my body. My chest ached, my eyes burned, and I couldn't breathe. I tapped the keyring my father had given me four years ago when I graduated from college. Heartbroken, I watched the ceremony from a hundred feet away, squeezing the umbrella's handle as if it were the only thing keeping me from blowing away. Droplets of rain washed away the salty tracks of tears from my cheeks. Guests huddled underneath the white canopy, better suited for a wedding than my father's funeral. It was a mixture of friends, business associates, and club members, the last of whom I once considered family. Trousers, suits, shirts, and ties drowned out the twenty or so wolves dressed in their standard leather, denim, and cuts. Hair combed back and gelled, beards trimmed and brushed. They all looked sharp for the funeral, not a dirty nail in sight. They scrubbed up good all to pay their respects for their fallen comrade and president. Rev, a biker turned pastor, stood at the small podium at the head of my father's grave, concluding the service. Groundskeepers waited in the wings, their excavators rumbling, drowning him out. They were ready to push a mound of freshly turned earth over the casket and usher away friends and family. The world never stopped spinning not even for Alexander Heller. Men from the funeral home lowered the cherry wood coffin into the grave, signaling for the guests to depart for the wake. A parade of bikers and black leathers made their way back to the vehicles and bikes. Dozens of motorcycles rumbled with straight pipe modified exhausts that shook the ground as they rode off, flying the red and black of the wolves' colors. My brother remained clutching my sobbing mother, letting her toss a white rose onto my dad's coffin. The groundskeepers didn't care or respect the grieving, swooping in, pushing my family away from the casket. I couldn't join them, couldn't say goodbye. I'd left that world, that life, behind seven years ago after my boyfriend, Jimmy, died in a fight trying to protect me. Some dick at one of our bars grabbed my ass, and Jimmy went nuts, laying into him. One nasty blow from behind was all it took, and he went down, smacking his head on the bar. Severe brain injury left him in a vegetative state, and the family ordered the doctor to switch off his life support. That was the day I turned my back on bikers and the wolves. Golden Hills Memorial Gardens brochure showed a variety of inclement weather options in appropriate shades of black, but the thunderstorm came as much a surprise as my father's death. Mom told me my brother called in some favors to get us a slot with the overbooked funeral company and the cemetery. The slapped together service was nothing like my father deserved or my mother wanted and every bit what I came to expect from the men of the motorcycle club he rode with. Amid the sea of bikes, four men leaned against another oak, watching the ceremony. Canopy from the overhanging tree and the parked vehicles had hidden them from the mourners. The gold and black of their patched cuts stood out. Jackals. Our rivals. Murderers of my father. My throat clogged. Metal from my keyring bit into my palm as I squeezed it. Son of a bitch. What the hell were those bastards doing here?